to another travel vlog. This time we are off to Edinburgh, Scotland. We got the plane up, got a quick Starbucks, of course, and we were heading up for a Six Nations rugby game between Scotland and Wales. We finally arrived at the correct hotel. Note that there are two premier inns on the same street on Rose Street, but we were staying in the hub and this is a quick little room tour. It is literally bog standard. You got your double bed, you got your bathroom and you got your sink and TV and that is all we needed. It was directly on Rose Street and we headed next door to start off the weekend in Roxy Lanes. Played a little bit of shuffleboard and had a very nice time. Then we headed for dinner at Hibiki, which was stunning. It was Japanese food. We had noodles and dumplings, unreal. Then it was a very quick walk back because we were staying on Rose Street and everything is very, very central. The next morning we were up early and over across the street, literally facing our hotel, was Stack and Still Pancake Place. And we headed in, it wasn't that busy because it was I think around half nine, ten. So it was relatively early, but we had the pancakes, obviously that's all that there is on the menu. I had the healthy option with some berries and granola, which was divine. Some of them had Nutella, all the bad stuff, but it was delicious and I would highly recommend. Then we went to walk all the pancakes off, went through Princess Street Gardens, took in the lovely views of Edinburgh Castle and the fountain, and it's a lovely, lovely walk. Then we headed up towards the Royal Mile and I love the little alleyways in Edinburgh with all the little staircases leading up to the mile so definitely check those out if you're in Edinburgh. And what's Scotland without seeing a bagpipe player? And this is the castle. We didn't go in because we had been in before but we just kind of walked around the surroundings which a lot of people do but if you are in the area it is very worthwhile going in and checking it out as there is a lot to see and do but otherwise it provides a lovely view of Scotland. This is a very iconic street in Edinburgh. It's called Victoria Street slash West Bow and gorgeous, colorful little shops and does remind a lot of people of Diagon Alley from Harry Potter. Then we headed to the grass market area, which gives a lovely picturesque view of the castle. This is Mary's Milk Bar, another place to check out if you are in the area and it is quite warm, which is quite rare, but there is a lovely photo spot up the stairs to the side. Then we headed for a little drink in the grass market, went to the wee pub and it had Irish chocolate, which made my whole weekend. There were people being filmed for the match prior to the game. Then we headed to AL and N Coffee as some of them wanted a little slice of cake and it is a very Instagram cafe, that's all I'll say. And then to end the night, we had a lot of pasta. Every morning we headed to Wellington Coffee. It is the best coffee in Edinburgh. Please do go check it out. Then we headed down to Stockbridge, which was where we used to live. And we headed to the pantry, a little favorite breakfast place. And the breakfast was divine. Then we had a little stroll around Edinburgh, heading up to Calton Hill. A very quick hike, it takes around 15 to 20 minutes to get to the top and gives amazing views of Edinburgh. And then it was time to head out to Murrayfield for the game. Luckily they had a fan zone and a TV that showed the Ireland and France game beforehand which was very very important to myself as all the bars were very very full. And this is how the night ended. Next morning it was our day to go, but we wanted to get a brass bagel, which is absolute favorite of ours. The one in Stockbridge had closed down, but we found this one in James's Quarter. And 
I wasn't too hungry, so I just opted for like a pizza bagel, bought himself one for the full breakfast on everything bagel, which is what we used to always go for. Then we headed back to the Royal Mile because we were going to Camera Obscura and the World of Illusions and another little bagpipe player. We had never been here before and a couple that we were with wanted to go so we tagged along and it had a lot of these weird mirrors outside and then once you went in there was a lot of things to see and do. I wouldn't say it was my favourite thing to do in Edinburgh but parts of it were very good like this little light display and the other interactive parts. This room honestly had me going sideways. I was ready to pass out. It was so trippy. So to be warned, this is really, really crazy. And one thing that was worth the time to do in Camera Obscura was to go to the roof deck and it has amazing views of Edinburgh. So definitely check that out if you are there because it gives panoramic views of the city, 360 views. This is the famous elephant house where J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter. It is closed at the moment, I think due to a fire, I'm not sure, but hopefully it will open again. This is the lovely Greyfriars Bobby, if you know the story, if not, do read about it. And then we headed to Silverino's Pizza, where we used to come in the summer before going to the Meadows because it does amazing pizza slices. Would totally recommend. And then it was time for home. Yeah. Yeah. Off to London.